Okay, there's my new electrolyzer design. You can see I've cut the plates long. Every other plate is staggered to double as a cooling fin. I've done it throughout the whole cell this time because it works so well in the first test I did. You can see both sides are like that. Um, the reason why I redid this cell is because I came across some really good cheap metal. This stuff here I got out of a hospital. The air duct system. I did some work for them and they had a bunch of this stuff thrown away. And as you can see, some of these stainless steel plates are still magnetic. Some aren't. Even the ones that aren't magnetic still appear to rust. This is the um, old cell that I had. Anyway, just real quick. These are the specifications of this new design. And that would be this plate right here. And this is a 37 plate cell for the simple fact that typically I run at about 6 amps. And at 6 amps on a triac, as you can see what that does to your DC voltages and your AC voltage. Wait, where's that at? I'm at the top here, that's the, the voltage coming off the triac is going to be 77 volts. And that puts me right at about 2.1 volts per plate gap. I don't have the liters per minute on that. This cell will crank out 5 liters per minute. The, um, the other cell would not do that. I think the, the most this one got was 3.5 liters per minute maybe. I'd have to sit here and really look this over. Yeah, this is a 38 plate bipolar. And here's the staggered manifold. It also only achieved about a 3.5 liter per minute. 3.75. So even though I'm one plate shorter, this is the non-staggered manifold and this is staggered manifold. I'm going to fire this up real quick, get lighter. Now that I've swapped out the gaskets to the EPDM and changed the tubing from vinyl to high density polyethylene, the foam issue is a thing of the past finally. What about 14 amps there? And this thing runs so much cleaner. It will foam up a little bit when it gets really hot. I'm at about 79 degrees right here. That's the one on the left that we're looking at. Um, the cell itself doesn't get over 105 degrees, even running it continuously at full power. I do have to have a fan blowing on it because I usually don't run it at really high power. I don't bother, but. That is about a 14 amp flame. That's a number six tip on a micro torch. So, it's about 24 centimeters. The number six tip, that's just HHO alone. 16 amps now, that's what the production's looking like. Oops. I did not have the radiator turned on that whole time. So we're about to see a drastic temperature change here. I'd say it's probably at about 90 degrees. It doesn't deepen yet, so... So anyway, the, the bubbles are a lot different now. Now that I've got the compatibility issue, the bubbles pop almost instantly. We're running at about 16 amps. Now, even though I've got all this power at my disposal here, typically when I'm running this thing, when I use it most, or what I most use this torch for, is it about this setting right here, which is 185 watts. You see it doesn't even use all the manifolds. That's the production. Very small torch could have done this, but that's a little flame right there that I do everything with. All the soldering and fabrication of some of the things on videos that you won't see until 
patent issues are resolved, I guess you could say that is. Because if I show any videos of a lot of the stuff I do in here, then something called public domain comes into contrast. And you don't want any of that involved in court litigation. So, there you have it. All that power, and I usually only use that much. But that's what makes this stuff amazing, is this little flame. I can make it a lot smaller than that and do soldering jobs and precision work. And you can do things that require extreme heat with ceramics. You can't work ceramics with certain torches. I can weld ceramics with this thing. So, just one thing to consider. That's the main thing.